got to ask you two, two or three other topics, but why don't we go over to now what's Richard going to do? <laughs> <laughs> well, the speech, uh, the speech I'm giving on Friday, you know, it, I started out at the University of Windsor 41 years ago. And so I'm going back as kind of my final lecture, if you like, oh. and um, which I won't, but I'm calling it that. And um, and I'm saying I'm retiring. I said, but if you could read my script, you'd see that I put quotation marks around retiring. Yeah. Because I'm going to consult. I'm going to be on boards. I'm writing a book. Um, oh, you're writing a book. I'm writing a book. Good for you. And um, and I want to. I've, I've you know met with Bill Davis and David Peterson and McGintney's chief of staff and McGintney's ex-chief of staff, and I want to do something in public service. Bill Davis would like me to run for politics. I've told Bill I won't, but there, I want to give back. And um, so I don't know what that's all going to be. Yeah. I mean, then there's the things like gardening and golf and getting fit and learning how to play the piano. What's your handicap? Well, I was a kid, it was seven. Oh. But it, now it's more like 17. So, uh, and it'll never be seven again. I won't do, I'm not going to play once a day. But um, yeah, I want to stay active. I, yeah. I've been here 14 years, that's a long time, it's been great. But it's time for a new CEO and it's time for me to do some stuff to refresh myself. Well, I, you said it earlier when we were talking also. To be a CEO for 14 years in today's environment is, is fantastic. That, that congratulations. Or bad, one of the other. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're doing something right. The board kept us. Uh, well, saying, you know, yeah. there was a study in, um, in the Harvard Business Review about five or six years ago that said a CEO's first five years are far better than the next five. I'm absolutely convinced my second five were a lot better than my first five, and I think my this last four have even been better. Um, you know, it's I've been able to stay engaged. I've got a wonderful board. Uh, we make money. My board lets me invest it back in on real sports and condos and soccer teams and television networks. Yeah. I've been really fortunate. But if I was a milk carton, I'd be past due. It's time for a new. Uh, <laughs> That's I, a great you know, way. Of I'd be past due. So. But, but something you just said because I realized it myself because I've been told maybe in the last two or three, four years, you're not a bad communicator. In your last two or three years as a CEO, Bill, you weren't, you're a pretty good communicator. Yep. It took me a long time to learn that. That was probably my biggest change I noticed, okay, that improved, that I, where I improved and it helped the company grow. Was there two or three things in those two periods you just talked about that you've noticed that changed? Well, you? Um, you know, way back when I was first a vice president, um, I remember going to my boss at the time saying I want to take speeching, speaking lessons, right. formal speeches. And uh, he said, oh, you don't have to, you're good. Well, the problem is he was lousy at it, so he, I didn't figure he could uh. really evaluate me. So I took those, it made a big difference. So I've been giving major speeches since 1983. I have every speech I've ever given. So I, I cherish good the chances you. to give speeches. I write my own speeches. I spend about an hour a minute on them, and I average 18 minutes of speech. I figure that's the maximum level. Plenty. In this business, you just get interviewed all the time. You're constantly in the news, so you have to get good at communicating. And it is one of the, I think as a leader, there's, there's three major things. You've got to be a great communicator. You've got to be great at recognizing people, and you've got to be a great coach or developer of people. Right. And so great communication skills, whether it's making a pitch to your board or a uh, corporate sponsor or standing up in front of your employees, you have to be good at it. And I think over the years, through a lot of experience and hard work, I'm pretty good. Did you have a, a mentor? Someone that you kind of hung out with for a number of no, years? No, you know, I'm asked that question. I think it's, I'm mean, like a tapestry. I picked up a bit here and there. Okay. But I also picked up things not to do. I mean, you know, you can observe, you can observe and say, boy, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so, no, I can't say that there's a mentor Okay. that I really embrace. I had some really effective leaders. Okay. You know, my first brand manager when I was an assistant, Scott. My first product group manager, General Foods. Um, you know, I've worked really well with Larry Tannenbaum. Yeah. He's, we work so beautifully together. Yeah. So I've been blessed with that. Um, Good. But I can't say I've had that one, one person. And this is off the cuff. You must have a collection of stuff from uh, the, the sports teams and that. You probably got a huge library of things. Over well, the years. I don't think I'm going to have any trouble writing a book, let's put it that way. <laughs> and the anecdotes will be quite good. How long have you been writing, putting it together? For well, years? I haven't. I've, I've been thinking about it conceptually for a couple of years. And, you know, who was it? Um, the woman who owned Martha, whoever owned the, the Washington Post. If you've read her autobiography or Martha, oh. Martha, I can't even remember her name. Okay. She started keeping, her family started keeping notes for her when she was like five years old. 
So really? she had a wealth of stuff. I didn't do that. I wish I had. I haven't kept a journal every day. Okay. Okay. But you know what? I've, I'm not going to have trouble. Yeah. It'll, it'll come back. Yeah. The stories will come back. Yep. When you were talking about interviewers, and you've been interviewed uh, more probably than anybody in Canada, are there any, <laughs> any special ones that you remember, that good, bad, or indifferent, that jump out? Um, I can remember the tough ones yeah. when you know I was firing a coach or a general manager, and um, you know I'm the ultimate. Uh, I'm a CEO. They can't go any higher than that. And, That's right. And sports writers and sometimes sports fans don't think CEOs should have any decision making. They think it should all be general managers. Well, if you take that type of thinking, I shouldn't be able to talk to a lawyer because I'm not yeah. a lawyer. I shouldn't yeah. talk to my CFO because I don't have a CA. That's you right. know, I have experts in every, every field, but it doesn't stop me from asking them the questions, right. making sure they do their analysis and due diligence, just testing them. And then ultimately, um, and when it comes to finance and marketing and stuff, I'm, I think I'm as good as anyone here. But when it comes to being general manager of the hockey team, I am not going to pick who, who Brian's going to draft in the first round this year. Yeah. I'm not going to tell Brian Colangelo who he should draft or who he should trade for. I leave it to the experts. And a lot of people don't realize this also, this is my guess. You go to a lot of the events. Yeah, a lot. And you travel a lot, not just Well, not as the much town. travel, but, no? uh, you know, we have events about five, six nights a week. Yeah. And that's tiring after a while. That's right. So this year is probably one of the first years I've cut back. Okay. I don't go to every game, but boy, I used okay. to go to probably 90% of the Raptor games and 80% of the Leaf games. And now we got TFC and yeah, a got, lot of you, stuff. You got a full, uh, full agenda. Yeah. You know what? I want to thank you a lot. Okay. This has been fantastic. Good luck on your retirement. Thank you. Okay.